In this video, we'll try to understand basic poly modeling by building up an airplane out of a simple box model. I'm going to go to the Create, Geometry, Standard Primitives, and place a box out here in the viewport. I'm not being so careful about snapping and so forth for this demonstration, but uh, if you were trying to build something accurately, this is something you should do. You'll notice in the basic parameters for the box uh, that I have a subdivision of 3, 3, and 3. By default, this will say 1. I've already built something in here previously, so Max uses the last setting as the default each time you build something. I want to be able to see these subdivisions inside here so I can actually manipulate them. I'm going to go to the Smooth and Highlights um, pull down here inside my viewport, and I'm going to turn on Edged Faces. This allows me to actually see the subdivisions. Now, at the moment this is still a parametric box and I haven't deselected it so when you're first in the create mode and you haven't deselected you could continue to adjust the parameters of the geometry that you're building if I deselect by clicking anywhere on the screen I can no longer edit this in the create I now need to move over to modify and I see once again my dimensions and my subdivisions these are the basic features that go with box of course, we've seen previously we could add any number of modifiers to this box to cause it to be shaped and formed in various ways, but in this particular demonstration we're going to look specifically at manipulating polygons. I'm going to begin by right-clicking inside the modifier uh, space here and pull down to where it says Convert to Editable Poly. Now that this is a poly mesh, I can take advantage of a number of features for manipulating polygons on this simple poly mesh model. I clicked and dragged the menu over to allow me to be able to see other features and if I like I can also select portions of this and relocate them elsewhere in the interface. What I'd like to be able to see is the subdivision surface tools, the selection tools, and if I select polygon which is what we're going to be operating on, I'd like to be able to see the edit polygons tools. Okay, with the polygon topological level selected, I can grab polygons that are on the side of this box and begin to shape them. This is much like the use of SketchUp. I'm going to select the polygon on the top of this and we'll use a simple bevel tool. Now there's two options inside bevel. We can simply click on bevel and then manually drag this up to the shape and profile that we want um, or by using the window that's adjacent to this setting we can actually numerically place the values. So for example the height and the offset of this, the taper essentially of the bevel. Now if you're in working in versions 2011 and 2012, the little dialog here is different. You see a little pop-up that sits right at the cursor. Um, it's a far more elegant um, interface, but basically it's the same set of features. You also notice inside here that there's some other options for group, local normal, and polygon. We'll look at these later. Okay, I'm going to go back to my for window display and I simply use the Alt W keys to be able to quickly get back to that. Alternatively we can move down here into the lower right hand corner and click and it lets us toggle back and forth between the active viewport and the setup of four views. I'm looking to select the point points that comprise the box now and I'm going to use my move tool and grab the gizmo and drag this over. So now I have a slightly larger canopy. Maybe in fact I might also shape this canopy so that there's a little bit more aerodynamic shape and profile to it um, on the leading edge. I'm going to continue to grab points and stretch those out and possibly stretch out the points here at the rear uh, to extend my plane further back. Okay, next what we're going to do is add some extra subdivisions in here so that we can have wings for both the rear and front of the plane. And with the box selected, I'm going to select the polygon uh, level of this. And I'm going to grab polygons on the opposite side of the fuselage here. I'm holding down the Alt key and pressing the middle mouse button so that I can pan dynamically. And now I've lifted up the Alt key so you can see that it, uh, I can get to the opposite side. I'll hold down the shift key to click and select a second polygon. I lift up the shift key and now I'm once again holding down the alt key and pushing the middle mouse button. 
Now with Shift, I deselected anything that was there before. And with Control, if I click, I add to my selection set. So this is fairly standard in most applications. Okay, with those two polygons selected, I want to add an extra subdivision in here so that um, I can then develop the wings that are at the back of the plane. To do this, I'm going to move over to the Edit Geometry section of the rollout and I'll find the area called Slice Plane. So Slicing Plane basically allows us to slice or chop up the geometry. It remains connected, but it adds additional topological features, in this case an extra segment. Now with this selected, um, everything else is locked out. This is also a convention of the software. You see the yellow highlights, yellow highlight, yellow highlight. That means the slicing plane is active. Nothing else can be done. So I'm going to use the rotate tool. I want to make sure that my angle snap is turned on so that this is going to be a precise rotation. And then I'll click here in one of the viewports that is perpendicular to the slicing plane. And I can look down below in my transform type in boxes and I can see that I've rotated the slicing plane 90 degrees. Now if we didn't have the angle snap turned on it would not be accurate. Okay, so we want to get this precisely at 90 degrees. I'm going to use the move tool next and I'm going to reposition the slicing plane somewhere near the back of the fuselage and if you look very carefully on your own screen you'll see a line in here a kind of a ghost of where the slice will actually be. So it's very helpful to see where the slice would go. I'm going to go ahead and click slice now. The slice has been accomplished. I could continue to make other slices if I like or we can simply turn the slicing plane off. Now that this has been done, I want to click anywhere on the screen to relieve the pick and you'll notice that I've got the additional subdivision in here. Okay, what I'll do now is select and then we'll push down the alt key and middle mouse button and pan around to the opposite side. Now I'll use the control key to pick up the other polygon and it's these polygons that I'm going to extrude from my rear wings. Looking in the edit polygon area of the interface if I use the hand click with the left mouse button I can slide the interface um, up and down to be able to get the other portions of the menu and I want to find the um, extrude and we'll click with that and we can adjust the height of the extrusion and here we might mention that uh, this is being done for the whole group so uh, later on when we get uh, polygons that have a lot of different orientations we'll look at the other couple of options so is this long enough it's good enough uh, here for the brief demonstration we'll go ahead and click OK now I can do more than simply just extrude and uh, bevel and so forth, uh, any polygons that are selected. We could also move, scale, and rotate the polygons. I'll move up above to the scale tool and uh, right now it's set to uniform scale and if I move onto the uniform scale gizmo I can select here in the middle you'll see that it uniformly scales the picks and if I'd like to I could grab the z-axis and we could scale just in that direction or we could scale just in the X direction. Okay, So keep this in mind. I'm going to shift to the move tool and we'll move these, sweep these back just a little bit. So now at the beginning of some tail wings. Now I'm also noticing that you know this is a rather clunky back end to the plane so we'll go ahead and select the polygons here at the back end of the plane. Uh, you might notice that I'm on the move tool here and it is possible to continue selecting and manipulate polygons while you maintain an active transform tool but you have to be careful it takes a little practice before you can get to that point in the uh, immediate short term you might need to begin by just using the select tool and then shifting over to one of the transform tools after you have your selection I'm gonna once again use my scale uniform tool and maybe we'll downsize this just a bit okay um, got some problems with that though you may have noticed see I've got some polygons here now that are out of plane and there's a remedy for that we could add extra subdivisions we could just leave it for right now it's no big deal and we'll come back to that later remember that it takes three points to make a polygon 
and if you have quadrilaterals comprised of four points, especially if there's a broken line in the middle like we have here because of this extra subdivision, you have to be cautious that you don't produce um, irrational or non-planar uh, objects. Okay, we're going to next add a subdivision for our tail fin. We could have done this at the same time that we produced the wings, but I'm doing it after the fact. And I'm going to turn my slicing plane again. And uh, it's already oriented in the direction we want. Maybe we'll pull this over here just a bit and go ahead and click slice. I'm going to turn that off. We can see we've got the extra subdivision here. And this time I'm going to use the bevel tool. And we'll extrude the tail fin up. Okay and uh, I'm going to scale this just in the X direction here and then we'll sweep that um, tail fin back. That's exceptionally large for this so let's, uh, let's drop that down just a little bit and pull it forward. Okay, good enough for this particular demonstration. Okay, so we've got a plane going here. Next, I'm going to grab the points at the front end of the fuselage and we'll resize those slightly using the scale tool. I'll use the uniform scale. Okay, so now we're looking a little bit more like a plane and finally we'll go ahead and extend the wings out to the side. And I'm using the control key to select the polygons from opposite sides. We'll go ahead and use the bevel tool again so that we get a bit, of a bit of a taper for these wings. I'll go ahead and extrude this out and I will use my scale tool. I'm going to grab the X axis to pull this back just a little bit. We'll also sweep the wings back just a little bit more and there you go. We have the beginning of a plane. Okay so we'll manipulate this further and also look at bridging here in a subsequent video.